to companies. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule and, and all the other competing activities that are going on to join us and our team. We wanted to kick off today's webinar by introducing our panelists. This morning, we have our Global Sales Support Manager, Aaron Spalsberry, on the line. He'll be doing a live demonstration for us today. Most of you already know Aaron, and we're really glad to have him with us here to talk about um, our exciting new products. We have Jason Bryan, our Director of Sales as well. Again, most of you probably already know Jason, um, and he'll be joining us to talk about why he's excited for this new product rollout. We also have Michael Poe, our Director of Product Management. He manages our Vigil and Visix product lines and will be here to support any questions or, or comments that you have. So if you have any thoughts that come up, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll either try to respond to you individually or address your question on the call, but we wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to be very interactive during this webinar. So today we're gonna cover um, just kind of why we're here, why we're excited about the new Visix Gen 3 cameras and some of the additional product highlights that are coming soon. So for those of you who were able to join our solutions showcase uh, last week, we talked a little bit about these products at a high level. Today we're gonna take a deeper dive into the products, show some screenshots, but also take you through a live demonstration so you really have a firsthand experience about the products that you're, you're gonna consume here shortly. So Jason will then walk us through kind of those top bullet points and what you can expect. We'll talk a little bit about Vigil 11.5, some of our new recorders and the product roadmap that follows there. And then we'll get into what I would call the most interactive part of our session today. We'll do a camera unboxing, we'll take you through what the product looks like, how it works and what you're gonna be viewing. And I'll follow up a little bit with some of the tools and some of our next steps and ways that we'd like to engage you over the next couple of weeks. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Jason, tell us a little bit about why we're excited uh, for this new addition to the 3X Logic ecosystem. Will do. Thank you, Susie, and good morning, all. Hey, I just really wanted to thank all of you for joining us today. Obviously, we'd we'd certainly prefer to be out in the field sharing all these great updates with you, but in these uh, in these crazy times, happy to share what we can here digitally. You know, as a company, we've just been super hard at work um, developing this new line and all these supporting systems. So, you know, Aaron and I are just really excited to, you know, and pleased to take a deeper dive with you today for these cameras. But I, I want to just kind of kick things off by explaining a bit of our philosophy. And I'm basically at the heart of, of what 3X Logic is about. We We really think of security holistically as a as this ecosystem. And if you're familiar with our, our line and, and our solutions, you've probably seen this slide before, but you know, this, this ecosystem of co components, um, they all kind of interconnect and layer on top of each other so that as you add components, as you add services, you, you just, you bolster that overall offering with seamless integrations of all of these parts and pieces. So, Within 3X Logic, we, we really consider video the ultimate verifier. So we really set out to provide the, the highest quality of video we could find. Because um, at the end of the day, that, that video becomes the proof or that validation of an event. So we've, we've, we've really built out this new camera line to fit into this ecosystem seamlessly with tools uh, meant to, to help move, manage, and, and really make that high quality video available at any device anywhere. So what sets these cameras apart from others? You're, you're probably sitting there asking yourself, why would I go with these cameras when there's just so many out there on the market to, to choose from? And, and really the reason is that these are just, all of these cameras are, are future proof. Uh, they're all built on a new platform uh, within this ecosystem I, I mentioned. That, that ecosystem, just it, it's built with so much flexibility on, on how and where this video is accessed and utilized. And, and it really all just starts under the hood of these cameras with literally a, a super supercharged chipset that gives us the opportunity to, to push so many great features to the edge, making these cameras just really, really powerful. Uh, this chipset allows us to offer a powerful suite of onboard analytics. And, and Aaron will actually show you a little bit more what I mean in that uh, in, in detail here later this morning. It also allows us to, to really just point this number at, or, or this video in a number of different directions from a, 
recording and storage perspective, offering the best in video redundancy, uh, video availability, and, and video management. We really took a step back and, and considered all the use cases out there, and, and we're really able to just consolidate our SKUs to simplify this line. So we're confident we've got the right camera for you, for you and all of your needs with all the you know, proper mounts, junction boxes, et cetera, really just to make it easier for you to install and set up. Uh, later this morning, Aaron will also show you some of the simple setup GUIs we've created with you know, well-considered defaults to, to just really ensure that you're taking full advantage of the uh, advanced imagers that we've built into these cameras. You'll also find that, that all of these cameras are just jam-packed with lots of feature-rich options that come standard across the line. And, and we'll highlight some of those uh, here again this morning as we walk through uh, the line in more detail. This, this launch, I did want to mention this, it, it also really just positions us to have literally no dependency on China from a sourcing perspective. So this entire line, this entire Gen 3 line uh, is fully NDAA compliant. And, and, and lastly, we're just real excited to extend a four-year warranty on this, on this whole line as well. So Susie, Susie, let's jump into some of these models. Okay, great, thanks. So these two cameras are, are certainly front runners um, as far as popularity goes. The, uh, the 5M28 there at the top has a, a five megapixel fixed, um, fixed lens that, that just provides an excep exceptional image and operates really, really well in low light conditions. It, it's really at a great price point and, and, and literally just, just blows some of the other more expensive uh, cameras out there on the market out of the water while offering all of these great um, edge-based features right out of the box. You know, for, for the last 15 years, 3X, we've long been the, the most innovative in moving video around and utilizing lower bandwidths, you know, really making it possible to offer this fantastic high-resolution camera um, and really be able to pull that up and monitor it over you know, any, any connection, whether that be hardwired or, or, or cellular. And this just truly becomes more and more important as we rely on our phones and, and tablets to, to manage this video. The, uh, the bottom camera is our new uh, six megapixel, 360 degree fisheye. Um, these are really, really popular for use in schools, uh, retail situations and, and commercial settings to, to really monitor large areas in all directions. Uh, with audio and alarm inputs available on this 360, you can integrate it in with other peripheral type devices to really just offer your customers a more enhanced solution. So I, I mentioned I mentioned schools earlier. So um, in a school cafeteria, this could be wired to maybe like a panic button, um, and, and that panic could could send a push notification out via the app to to the the school administrators who can in real time access this video. Um, and, and really assess the situation. With a built-in mic, they can not only view the situation, but also listen in. So, you know, again, this kind of added layer of security uh, you, you can offer right out of the box with these cameras really just gives you so many benefits you can, you can leverage, you know, outside of a, a traditional video surveillance system. So uh, we, we show a wall mount here. So, you know, whether you're installing these, you know, on a ceiling tile, direct to a wall or hang, maybe hanging down on a pendant, we, we've got the right mount for you and, and your specific situation to, to really just get the best view. So Susie, let's check out the, uh, the next. Okay, so follow next here in popularity are, are these two options. You know, when and where you need that verifocal lens, really just offering additional flexibility in that field of view you're after. These cameras are both uh, five megapixel with uh, remote focus options, really making it easy to, to just point and adjust within software to, to give you the best settings for that, that nice crisp image. And Aaron will show you some of those here in just a little bit. So consistent with most of our line, you know, all of these are, are, are hardened for outdoor use with high impact ratings, meaning you, you can really just put these in in just about any uh, in, environment out there. Again, both of these have capabilities to wire in alarm inputs. Uh, which make these uh, outdoor cameras a great verifier. I mentioned verifier earlier, um, when any alarm situation occurs. I've actually seen these used to monitor um, outdoor or exterior entry points. Uh, you could wire up a, a, a doorbell, which again can send the owner a push notification. 
uh, to where when someone's present, you can verify with video. And then, and then of course, you could take advantage of our fantastic integration with Infineus um, to where you could um, remotely unlock that door, which, which, you know, your, your customers just absolutely love. And again, you're, you're leveraging the, the, the power of these cameras and, and this ecosystem that we built. So the last two SKUs I, I really wanted to share, which again are available here in the in the very near future here on, on June 1, are two more of these bullets. The uh, the uh, 5M4, so that, that mini bullet there on the bottom, it's just a, a fantastic cost-effective um, um, solution that just offers so much versatile versa, um, uh, utility in an outdoor setting. And, and all of these cameras I've shared with you to this point, they're they're all up on our website with you know spec sheets available. So if you want to dive in and you know research some some of the additional you know specs relating to uh, illumination, IR, true day night, etc., they're they're all out there and, and available uh, for you. They, they've also all been uploaded to our uh, our quote tool. So if you've got access to that, please reference that um, or reach out to our sales team, and we'd be more than happy to help you with you know, camera selection and pricing. All right, so throughout the summer, uh, we're gonna continue to launch more and more cameras into this, you know, expansive line. Uh, in the upper left there, we've got a couple of two megapixel domes that are, are really just kind of more scene or situation specific. Uh, one, one of them's indoor only and, and offers a local HDMI output. So you can run this directly into a, a viewing monitor. Uh, these are fantastic for, for retail situations. Uh, the other is an outdoor dome offering 60 frames a second, um, you know, really giving you double the, the, the amount of frames, allowing for just fantastic um, investigation, slow motion investigation of a situation. The uh, upper right there, we've got a new 180 uh, camera coming out in August, which, which we're really excited about. This is a it's an eight megapixel camera with just an incredible uh, panoramic view you can use to monitor uh, big areas like parking lots with just a super crisp image you can you know digitally zoom into and, and, and capture that perfect shot. The uh, bottom left cameras are our popular cube or multi-sensor camera and, 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 and this guy just has so much flexibility. Obviously everything pushed out at the edge as I mentioned before and you know, really cost competitive, which is so many, so many amazing features packed under under the hood of this little guy. The um, uh, just a, a few to, to note here. It's it's got a two megapixel camera. Uh, it's got built-in PIR motion detection as well as a uh, a mic and speaker combo, so that through the app you you now got two-way audio communication. So, you know, th this this camera is fantastic for small business applications. Um, again, you've got all these all these features built into this one device. Um, nice thing about this is it can, it can also be uh, deployed over Wi-Fi. So just extremely simple from an install, um, really easy to set up, and uh, your customers will just love the uh, mobile app um, interaction with that audio and video really from from anywhere. And then lastly, in August, we'll launch a, a PTZ just giving you maximum control and, and visibility into extremely large areas with a 30 times digital zoom. Um, that'll really just kind of round out our line with a camera literally for, for all situations. So next, I, I'm actually gonna kick it over to Aaron uh, to elaborate a little bit more on our, our suite of analytics. Um, and, and he'll also touch on just a really exciting release of our uh, digital platform coming up. So Aaron, uh, take it away, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I appreciate that. Uh, looks like my mic's on. You, I think you guys can hear me okay. Yes, thank you uh, there, JB. So guys, talking about some of the advanced analytics, and I've actually got a camera. We're going to go through this, just a, a real quick kind of agenda that I've got planned for you guys here. Um, we're going to do a quick unboxing here in a little bit. I'm going to show you the camera. We're also going to look at some live video and really show you how uh, 
just absolutely brilliant picture quality is on this new uh, Gen 3 line of cameras. But we definitely wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the analytics, because that has been a big question that people have been asking, you know, oh boy, you guys are changing your whole product line. What are we doing? Uh, is the analytics going to go away? Are you keeping some of those things? I have so many places that love these and use them. Um, and they've been extremely successful over the years. And that's exactly what, uh, what we're going to continue to do. We are uh, you know, putting our advanced analytics as well as our standard analytics into the new Gen 3 camera line. Uh, for some of you that haven't done any of this analytic, well, what are these kind of good for? Well, a lot of different things. In fact, you know, just kind of reading through some of these, you can see dwell time, tamper detection, object tracker, all of that. Let me give you some use cases for this. In a lot of instances, what we may want to do is put a camera, let's say, into a retail place, right? A retail establishment of whatever, selling clothes or shoes or who knows what. Um, a lot of times we want to be able to count how many people are going in, how many people are going out. Well, the next question that everybody always asks, in fact, we were just talking about this this morning because this has been a big topic as well, is occupancy count. Right. Well, our time of flight camera actually does have the capability of doing occupancy count, which is a really nice thing. You know, entering and exit filters, dwell timing filters. If we want to know how long someone is waiting in line at your store uh, to get service, right? We call that one time to service or dwell time. Um, we can tell you that. We can tell you that information. You know, how many people have been standing in line for zero to thirty seconds, thirty to sixty, so on and so forth. You know, whatever we choose to uh, to display, we can pull all of that metadata into the vigil platform and run through all of it. We know all of those logical rules built in. Uh, these are going to be an option, just like we did, uh, oops, I apologize there guys, I've got mute my phone. Uh, just like we did before, where we had the standard analytics uh, you know, built into the camera, we're also going to offer the advanced analytics, okay? So we are going to have both of those broken out. As you can see here on the screen, the, ba the base analytics versus the advanced. So doing some of the kind of more advanced things does require a little bit different type of a calibration. And for those of you that have done this are certainly going to understand what I'm about to state here. When we get up to do some of these advanced analytics, we have to have a little bit more in depth of, uh, you know, of, of being able to calibrate these. We wanna be able to set the horizon, the distance, how big is a person, how big is a vehicle, where are my lines going to be? And of course, we've uh, just continued that along with our you know, proven advanced analytic module and we're putting it in the Gen 3 camera. So that'll be, uh, Really nice to see that come out. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed here, Susie, if you would. Uh, we'll start uh, cruising along here. Oh, thank you. So guys, uh, another thing, and you probably have seen this, if you've seen, or you've been on some of the other calls or you've heard of us talk about this even, oh boy, we were even starting to talk about this back at ISC last year. The you know, Vigil 11.5 is moving to a 64-bit support model. Well, what does that mean? That means a lot, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. And this is extremely exciting. Uh, this is going to have considerably more processing and considerably just simple more power uh, to be able to run this VMS. The biggest one, we're jumping up in uh, camera compatibility, or I'm sorry, uh, camera inputs. We can jump up to 64 now on these machines that we were doing before. This is going to just absolutely progress our software like you would not believe. I mean, we're gonna have so much more capabilities in here, and of course, all of this is going to be directly integrated with all of the Gen 3 cameras. We're still doing all the OnVIF support, all of the other manufacturers that we've had in here. This is just going to improve our platform uh, tremendously by just making it a more efficient, a faster, and overall just a better experience, uh, primarily for the end user, of course, but also for the installer. Everything's just going to be more fluid. It's going to be a lot easier, and uh, I think you guys will really appreciate that. Uh, last but not least, got to talk a little bit about our Easy Setup Wizard and some of the improvements that are coming down the pipeline on that one. For those of you guys that have used our Easy Setup Wizard, um, that's as easy as it gets, right? So you can take a rookie, a brand new guy that has never done IP, has a very little network knowledge, you know, he knows how to plug in some cables and whatnot. We can go out there and he can sit in front of a, a setup wizard, find all of the cameras, go through some basic settings that are just simply choices that he's going to make. You know, what is his frame rate going to be? What's his resolution going to be? And ultimately apply that back into the software. But yet, you still have all of the options of logging in via web browser, all the stuff that we've had before. That's all still there. But we are making some improvements into that you know, nice, easy setup wizard that is just going to make it super easy for anybody that, that uh, maybe has never 
they've done this before, right? We're going to have a nice little walkthrough for them to go through. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at some of our DVRs and whatnot. Um, you know, I believe I was going to kick this uh, a little bit back over to Jason. I think he's going to talk a little bit about some of the hardware. Um, but uh, Jason, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. And, and certainly thanks for sharing all those great, great updates uh, we can expect with 11.5. We're really excited, again, to, to kind of expand the, the headroom and capacities across these appliances. Um, we're, we're also excited about some, some slight modifications we're going to make to this existing line, mostly pertaining to the V500 and the, the V, I'm sorry, the V5000 and, and V7000 uh, line of appliances, really just making them a lot more a lot more flexible. So the uh, the analog capture cards that we can build into these appliances uh, will truly just offer your your customers the flexibility um, and, and ease of migration from you know an older analog solution uh, to today's IP uh, cameras. As as these appliances, they're, they're actually going to come with what we call our our hybrid license, uh, which gives you that flexibility to change out those legacy cameras with our new line of IP cameras at your own pace. So um, the, the nice thing about this, guys, is, is, is you can do this without coming back to us with, uh, without any additional licensing costs. Uh, the, the capture card itself uh, offers more flexibility as well, as you can really just kind of mix and match you know, traditional analog cameras um, over, to, um, over to HD analog, obviously all across that, that, that coax cable. Um, meaning you don't have to go in and replace that that expensive cabling infrastructure. So really, again, just giving you a lot more options uh, when, when talking through migration strategies uh, with your customers. Um, I, I do want to mention, and, and didn't mention this before, uh, but, but actually available now, we do have two uh, HD analog cameras within this new um, Gen 3 line. So we, we've got a dome, uh, we've also got a bullet, um, again, both HD analog cameras with um, uh, varifocal lens, we've got uh, IR and more. So certainly keep this in mind as you're out talking with customers and, and looking for those best options, um, especially when you're, you're kind of forced into leveraging their existing cabling infrastructure. So our ever popular uh, small business kits uh, will we'll also get a bit of an upgrade with um, obviously, with the new Gen 3 cameras, as well as updates to the to the V250 appliance, to really take advantage of that 11.5 uh, software Aaron Aaron described. Um, so we're going to be able to to leverage that additional processing power and memory within the V250 to accommodate these these new kits with with four megapixel cameras. Um, again, we've got a number of of, of kits. We'll continue to be um, offered and you know variations of domes uh, and or bullets give me all sorts of flexibility within that range of a four eight or, or 16 camera system um, so we're, we're real excited to give these kit kits a uh, a bump in resolution you know at a, at a really competitive price so these will uh, be available later this summer uh, in August so we'll make sure and keep all of you, you posted on that so tell you what next um, I'm going to have Aaron um, walk us through some of these simplistic tools that we've built into these cameras uh, to again just ensure they're they're quick and easy to install and and set up and then I, I know he's real excited to give you a demo of the uh, uh, impressive image from these these powerful cameras so so Aaron back to you sir all right <clears throat> thank you buddy all right guys so uh, just real quick just wanted to kind of run you through really what the new what the new setup GUI looks like and one of the things that we do is of course, once we launch directly into the camera, uh, you get a nice little kind of preview here. You'll notice off to the left side, some of these things are gonna be uh, obviously grayed out because we're going to be doing a couple of different things, but you're going to have the same look and feel for every single camera that you log into. Uh, for one thing, you're gonna notice that like my zoom button, like this particular camera has a motorized zoom lens. I can motorize zoom in, zoom out, but it's not a PTZ, it is an autofocus. That's why, the, let's say for instance, the focus would be grayed out. And we followed this theme throughout the entire software. So it's really easy for the installer to be able to say, hey, I see exactly what buttons I have to click on, what options I have, 
and that kind of a thing. And in fact, once you set up your Zoom, you can either hit the autofocus button or just leave it in auto or, a, sorry, switch it over to manual. If you switch it over to manual, those focus buttons obviously then ungray, you can make those changes. So it's really kind of an intuitive way of setting up these cameras. Because let's face it, there's a lot of stuff inside these cameras that if you're not, you know, I'll call myself a camera junkie, right? Someone that really follows, uh, you know, cameras from DSL, DSLR types to CCTV to you name it. Um, some of these settings may be intimidating. And what we've done is we've made it extremely easy for them to get in here and be able to navigate through the software. So on the next slide here, what you're going to see is a couple of things that we've just set up as far as <clears throat> being able to turn on or off that backlight setting. Um, if we want to come in here and turn on wide dynamic range, okay, kicking on wide dynamic range, which ours has 120 decibel WDR, these are true WDR cameras, so we have the option of being able to turn this feature on or off, and it's just a simple toggle. They're no longer going to have to mess with any type of, uh, you know, settings or anything along those lines as far as adjusting that. We've actually done all of that work for you, and it's completely automated within just simply turning this particular feature on. Uh, the next one that we're going to look at here, guys, is going to be part of the OnVIF. And this is something that, believe it or not, we run into this quite a bit. Um, in some instances, if you are using, let's say, for instance, an OnVIF utility, and you're trying to discover a particular camera or even a particular line of cameras, sometimes um, you can't find them. That's because it's been turned on or off. And in fact, a lot of times you couldn't adjust that within some cameras. But ours, we just simply said, hey, you know what, guys? Let's just turn this as a toggle. We're going to turn this guy on. Do you want these to be discoverable through an OnVIF utility or not, right? Very, very easy integration, you know, as far as being able to use the OnVIF utility. One of the other things that we did was, of course, put in this privacy mask and, and how we did this configuration. This is an important one, and this is just kind of leads us into really what's the difference between our cameras and everybody else's? Well, there, there's quite a few things, but the first thing that I'm going to mention here, guys, is you really need a Swiss army knife of cameras, right? You need to be able to put up a particular camera or a particular resolution and then have, you know, just to be vague about it, certain features that the end user is looking for. Uh, privacy mask is going to be one of those. Um, and of course, this is integrated into all of these. But what is this used for? Well, this just simply allows us to essentially black out a portion of the screen so it no longer appears either in the web browser or on your camera software, no matter where you're recording, whether it be SD, cloud, or back on the DVR, it's just a black area. And this is actually, this is actually showing the, uh, the setup here. Uh, and what he's done is he's gone in here and he said, hey, I'm going to mask out that window so no one could potentially see out of the window. And during the initial setup, it shows up as a blue box with a yellow outline there. Once you hit save on it, it actually turns into a black box. I'm sure some of you folks have probably seen this before, but this is really important, um, especially in today's world. Wherever you're putting these cameras, let's say you're putting them, you know, I don't know, in a hospital, uh, and it's in a hallway, and it just so happens can see in a patient's room, that kind of a thing. Well, you would want to privacy mask that area. Perhaps you're putting it in a, in a school, and it just so happens to be right outside the bathroom, and on the corner, you can kind of see in there. You need to be able to mask out that area and completely blanket from all users within the software. And that's exactly what we use these for. And we made it super easy to be able to set this up. You literally draw a box with your mouse, hit save, and it's permanently masked, of course, until, you know, as an admin, you go in and clear that area. But it is, in, in, you know, completely configurable by you, super easy to be able to navigate this guy. And again, guys, that's the name of the game. More options, easy to set up. At the end of it all, we want to be able to configure all of these. All right, so <clears throat> one other thing I wanted to kind of talk about, too, what can we do with these cameras? Well, the world is progressing very, very quickly. You know, we went, if you guys remember way back when, we had H.263 and then 64, and now we're up to 265, you know, and even some of the older compressions, right, the motion to JPEGs, um, those are all available. Uh, believe it or not, we didn't do away with any of those. We actually just kind of moved it up into the latest and greatest, and what you can see there, guys, is that actually triple streaming, three different streams that are configurable from each one of these cameras. Uh, this is the default that we're looking at here. They are going to be defaulted to 265. You can drop it back to 264 if you want to. You can change your channel numbers. You can do all that good stuff. And all this is going to be fairly straightforward, fairly basic as far as what you guys have already seen before, especially those that have set these cameras up, drop down for frame rates and all of that good stuff. You also have the option for variable bit rate as well as constant bit rate. 
that's an important one as well. Um, and you know, when you are talking to someone about putting cameras maybe on an existing network, um, that's gonna be important. How much are we going to be able to throttle or how much can we actually use within each individual camera? And it's completely configurable through this particular system. And obviously changing that frame rate is going to be a big one as well. One of the things that JB mentioned earlier, guys, 60 frames a second on a camera. We are moving at the speed of light as far as what these cameras are now capable of doing. Being able to catch faster and faster objects, being able to have better and better image quality. For those of you that are gamers that are on this call or even you know, television guys, right? We all sit around, we watch TV. Well, do we look at it on an old analog you know, uh, tube television anymore? No, definitely not, right? We're playing our video games at 60 frames a second. We're watching our television in high def in 1080p or 4K. That's what everybody's going to. We're doing the same thing, right? We are leading that charge as far as progressing that technology into the CCTV world. And ultimately, that's what we're bringing you guys here today and throughout the rest of the year. All right, having said that, guys, one other thing I'm gonna to touch on here too, again, options. And I wanted to show this slide because I believe this one is actually really important. And this is going to kind of lead us into a bit of the unboxing and ultimately showing you some image quality from this camera here. When you're going out there to set up these cameras, <clears throat> a lot of times we're going to have different lights. Okay? You're going to have, uh, like for instance, my office here, I've got a mix of uh, you know, CFLs, the fluorescence and some incandescence and of course lights from monitors. Um, in a gymnasium, you're gonna have you know, a mercury vapor, maybe mercury halide in a parking lot, fluorescence in you know, tube type that are in the hallway, and those come in half a dozen different temperatures. Um, all of these things, you're not, you're not stuck with whatever it is the end user is bringing you anymore. And that's why I wanted to just kind of show this to you guys. We have some presets in here, and again, trying to make it easy on the installer. We wanna come in here and say, well, what Kelvin rating is your light? Better than anything, just come in here and kind of click around on it and get a kind of a personal feel, a preference. What looks the best to you? What captures the best detail? What gives you the overall best image quality that you can produce for your customer? And again, that's really what we wanted to do. We wanted to make it to where it was entirely set up for being able to really fit into any application. And that's why I wanna just kind of briefly show you this one here, guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, yep, if you would, go ahead and uh, kick this guy. Actually, go ahead and stop sharing if you would there, Susie. So let's do this, guys. All right, so hopefully you guys can see me. If, if I'm not big on your screen, go ahead and click it around a little bit. So I'm gonna walk you through this camera and then I'm gonna show you uh, the live camera as well. So uh, one of the things I wanted to just kind of point out here, guys, this is, uh, I actually have uh, the VX5M28, okay, MDIAW. This is, oh, there we go, that was great. Whoever did that, thank you for that. Um, this is what they come in, okay, standard little box. I'll just walk you through some of this stuff real quick. Um, of course, you always have to have a mounting template, okay? You're gonna drill a hole in a wall, you got a mounting template. Make it nice and easy for your installers to go through this stuff. And in fact, I've actually got, already got my guy out here, but I'm gonna walk you through a couple of different things. So for starters, let's talk about the dome cover. These dome covers, is, it's an all aluminum, okay? It's an extruded aluminum, the way that these guys are made. Of course, you're gonna have your safety screws. It comes with the safety screw as well, you know, typical Torx bit with the pin in the middle of it. But on top of that, we've also got a couple of other things that are happening inside here. For one, you're gonna notice this is a nice, big, thick ring. See where the safety screws are, right? They're on the outside of this ring, okay? That's important. Why is that important? For weatherproofing, right? Weather resistance. We've got a couple of different ratings. You know, a lot of these are going to be IP67. That's a really nice rating for being able to run these guys outdoor. That means if someone happens to be cleaning this camera off, you're not gonna run into trouble. There's a couple of other things that kind of come into play with this as well. Notice that the dome is replaceable. You can actually remove these guys and pull this out. Now, what's so special about this particular dome? Well, a couple of things. For one, they're incredibly, I'll try to get this as best I can here, guys. They're incredibly optically pure, right? Look at how clean they are. Now, why in the world would we do this, okay? Well, technically, this is called Lexan 143R. Okay, that's the official name for this stuff. Impress your customers and tell them it's a Lexan 143R. There's a couple things that make this special. For one, it's more resistant to that yellowing that you see or that hazing that you see in a lot of cameras, okay? On top of that, 
it's just simply cleaner around the extremities, okay? As you get around to the edge and you really start to you know, turn your camera towards that area that's really bent, if you've probably seen this on a lot of domes, you get a lot of distortion and things of that nature. We don't get that with this style of Lexan. That is a higher grade Lexan and it's a really nice product to have built into this camera. Of course, these are all going to be powder coated. This is not spray paint, guys. It's very, very scratch resistant. You know, just simply put, it's gonna last for years and years and years. Now, I happen to have one of the five megs and I've actually got this one running because I actually use this one here, but I wanted to show you guys something here real fast as well. This is really nice, okay? See the link light that you have on there? It's not in the dome, okay? It's actually back here on your connector. That's really nice. You don't have to you know, pull the cover off of the dome. You don't have to do that anymore to see if the camera's powered up, to see if it's working, if you're trying to do any type of troubleshooting. A couple of other things we're gonna walk you through as well here. Uh, I'll try to get this as best I can here on the camera here, guys. But you'll notice the cable pass-through, okay? Of course, it's entirely properly epoxy potted, okay? It's completely weather sealed off. It's a 12 layer glass epoxy board. Everything inside here, is surface mount technology, okay? You'll also notice probably the thing that stands out the most, uh, the SD card slot, right? You guys can see the SD card slot there. Also the microphone, which happens to be a replaceable unit. You can actually de-pin it. It literally just pops off and you can replace it. Should somebody damage your microphone, you know, they shove a needle in there or something like that, right? And actually damage your microphone. The reset button right here, clearly labeled, very, very easy for the installer to find. We didn't hide it, right? A lot of times you have to find a little pin or whatever. This one's just clearly labeled right here. Also, you'll notice a little tiny battery that's right there. Now, why in the world did we do that? Well, what if you have a power outage over the weekend and your cameras and your whole system's down for two or three days? You don't want to lose the settings. All of those things we were just talking about where the installer's going to go through and get this thing just looking perfect for the end user, we're going to maintain those settings in the camera. We don't want to get rid of them. Also, you'll notice this nice little ring that comes around here. That part of it is you know, going to be the piece that seals up to that Lexan, keeps the infrared from scattering, that type of a thing. But of course, this is nice and it's attached to the front of the camera. Another quick note too here, guys, you'll notice this is a true three axis gimbal, okay? It has the option of being able to rotate this way, okay? It also rotates within its own mount, okay? Of course, tilts, does all that good stuff. What does that mean? Well, that means that I can literally mount this camera like this, like this, this, like that, like this, whatever direction that you want. Proper three axis gimbal. One of the questions I always get asked, and I know this is always a challenge, because believe it or not, not all cameras do this. I want to take this thing and I want to put it in a high school and I want to mount it like this and I want to look that way, right? I want to look down the hall. Well, yeah, absolutely. We're going to turn it like this. We're going to poke that guy this way, but oh, well, now that's great because now everything's 90 degrees. No problem. Just rotate this guy around and now everything's right where it needs to be. We try to make it easy, guys. We wanted to make this easier, simpler, and faster for installation. Another point I'm going to point out to you guys here that this is this is brilliant. I don't know if you guys are. I'm trying to get this bag open here, guys. Bear with me. Um, this is fantastic. So a couple of things that obviously come in here, uh, you know, just to kind of run you through. Of course, you do have the nice sealed off portion for the other side of the uh, of the. The Cat5 connector, right? So if you do want to do this, you can make this unit completely sealed and weatherproof from there. Of course, you're also going to have, you know, your typical wall mount type stuff. But these guys, this is where it really gets good. You're going to love this. Okay, so how many of you guys have ever done a, uh, an install and a drop ceiling? Um, I have, right? And usually what I would do is I would take a box like this and I would cut the cardboard off, right? And I'm trying to make some type of brace above it, or I'm outside trying to find a piece of plywood, something I can run some wood screws into, just something to brace into a drop ceiling if I didn't have a T-bar mount. Well, we included these guys, right? There's two of these and two of these. These actually screw directly in to the base of the camera, just like that, okay? So I wanna mount this camera, and this is a five megapixel fixed lens 2.8, no focus, just point and shoot type of a camera. I'm gonna take this camera, I'm gonna put these guys in here, I'm gonna to go to wherever it is that I want it, and I'm now just going to push it up into the drop ceiling, okay? Just literally poke it through the drop ceiling. Then I'm gonna take one of these guys, drop it onto the top, and tighten this guy down, okay? That's how fast we can install these. This is a brilliant way of doing this. For those of you that have done drop ceilings, or, or maybe those of you that haven't, it, it's been an issue, <laughs> to be quite honest, to simply put it. It's difficult, it's difficult to do that. 
And this is a simple method. Again, guys, this is 3x logic trying to change the formula and just make things easier on everybody. Because let's face it, if you can install it, you know, 20 cameras in the time it takes everybody else to do five, we're gonna do better, right? All right, so having said that, the moment you've all been waiting for, guys, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to hit my share screen and I'm going to kick this guy over to my client software. I'm gonna show this to you. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and logged in. This is actually, uh, Mike, I hope you don't mind me saying, so this is Mike's driveway. This is our eight megapixel, um, our new dome, Gen 3 dome. A couple of things I wanna point out here. We're looking at a live shot. I just launched into the client. I brought this guy up, put it up into full screen within the client, but I wanna point something out to you guys. Uh, something I have kind of kept from mentioning until now, these cameras are running Amberella chipsets. Okay. Amberilla chipsets are all over the world. Okay. They are fantastic chipsets. And quite honestly, they're chosen by a lot of the leaders in the industry for not only CCTV, but also in the cinematic world. Okay. Um, manufacturers like DJI, the, the drone guys that do unbelievable cinematic photography, uh, GoPro, all of these folks have used Amberilla chipsets. And that's why we've chosen them in here. Look at the color. Oh boy, I hope my little, let me get, uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see that box or not. I'm gonna slide myself over here, but I'm trying to look at the side of, uh, of his house here. Look at the, look at the color of this, okay? The redwood looks like redwood. The greens are actually greens, okay? Everything in here is set up properly. This is, this of course is our eight megapixel. This is a true 4K camera. Overall, this just gives us a, really an image quality that we've never had before. Well, we combined that Amberilla chipset, honestly, with a very high-end lens. For those of you that shoot, uh, you know, cinematography or, or, or really do, do any type of, of photo shooting, and guys, just kind of give you an idea, right? I mean, here's the camera that I shoot, you know, my son's soccer photos with, right? When we go out, we go to the Grand Canyon or I go to a sporting event, that's the camera I use. Well, those of you guys that know this, you have a lot of lenses. There's different grades to lenses. The lenses that we've chosen are incredibly accurate. I've been looking at some of these over the past few weeks. They're just unbelievable how clear they are, how crisp they are. Look at the extremities, okay? Look at the edges. Even though this is in wide angle, you can see the pitch of his, of his roof there across the top. It is in wide angle mode, okay? But notice you don't have any image blur out towards the edge. Just overall, this picture quality is incredibly good. It is incredibly good. And that's the name of the game, guys. We wanted to make these a tier one camera. We wanted you to be able to not only troubleshoot this against any other camera that you, know, you may be evaluating or testing or whatever it may be. I want you to put these up, turn it on, Say, all right, Mr. Customer, you're gonna come in here, and we're gonna show you how your software works. And I want him to sit down and look at his screen and go, wow, those look great, right? That's the best thing in the world. It was funny, we were having a discussion, I was talking about what we used to have way back when, the black and white, grainy images, you know, these really just kind of awful images that we've had, you know, in this industry from two decades ago. What a difference, <laughs> what a difference a couple of decades make. I mean, just look at the image quality on this. All right, guys, I wanted to just kind of leave you with this thought. Think about image quality, think about your clarity, think about the summation of all of these parts, okay? The ease of installation, the wizard, how we go back and do all of the installation, and honestly, the way that we've made it easier, not only on the installer, but also on the sales guys, right? We wanted you to have that Swiss Army knife a camera that you can really just kind of rest easy thinking, you know what, I'm putting up the best camera I can for my customer. And ultimately, I hope you guys decide that uh, it's the Gen 3 line, you know, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, that's enough of me soapboxing this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I will hit stop share and I'm going to kick this back over to you, Susie. Thanks so much, Aaron. And, and just thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. I hope that that our partners and our customers really can feel how passionate the 3X Logic team is about the products that we're providing, and most importantly, the solutions that that, that those products bring to the table. So again, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for for spending time with us today. Thank you, Mike, for driving these solutions. Um, we really do feel like we're providing the very best um, possible for your end user. So thanks again.
My pleasure. So I'm gonna take just a couple minutes to touch on some of the tools that we have available to get you guys started on the new line. Again, we have documentation on our website today. We also have uh, obviously the launch webinar. We also have the official product announcement that'll come out today. So as long as you're receiving our Tuesday e-letters and our regular communications, we'll have a nice product announcement that links you to every piece of um, collateral, end user material, technical documentation that you'll need to be familiar with the product. We'll have a new training module. This will be added to our vigil certification um, and it'll be available June the 1st. Again, it'll just be an add-on. So as long as you're already certified with vigil, this will just be an additional component to get you going there. First customer ship date uh, varied, but most of them you saw for June 1st, some for now and some for July. And then again, we'll invite you back to talk a little bit more deeply about phase two, which includes the rest of those cameras that Jason mentioned, as well as Vigil 11.5. We've updated some of our spec sheets. So now we've included some of the vertical uh, markets and some of the use cases that we think these are perfect for. So our spec sheets for this line have a new look and feel. We also have the mount spec sheets as well. And then again, you can see here some of the important documentation like the quick start guide. Again, all of this will be linked for you in the product announcement right at your fingertips and of course always available on the website too. We've also developed a new tool that we think will be very helpful. This is our camera and mount matrix. It's a multi-page document, but what it does is it shows you maybe a part number of something you've been familiar with that you've been purchasing. It helps you identify what the new camera part number is. So if you're looking for something that's similar with some more features, this is how, how we're going to help you find it. We think that matrix will, will hopefully make things a little more easy along with the mount matrix too. We have a new document here. This is called our solutions brochure. It's a PDF document that has embedded links in it with all of the collateral. So this is end user brochures, sales material. It also includes videos. And, and some of the tools that we think will make selling our solutions a little more um, comprehensive and right at your fingertips. I also wanted to mention our free training. As you know, for a limited time, um, we've been offering free certification training on demand. With the inability to travel right now, we wanted to make sure that people had the opportunity to continue their education and some of their professional de development. So Brandon Harless, who's also on the phone today, he is our training manager. He has taken our business to a new level by offering on-demand training. And those certifications for both Vigil and Infineus are available again through the end of the month for free. And then you have 30 days to complete that training. So if you have anyone on your team that needs to get certified, or maybe that's the next step your team needed in becoming a certified partner, try to take advantage of this, of this great opportunity. Hopefully we'll be back on the road before we know it, but we think there's a real value behind um, on-demand learning as well. And we want to invite you back to some of our, our next virtual events. We're going to have a webinar here on May the 28th next week. We're going to talk about some solutions that um, we're modeling after the need for change. So because the world is changing, so are we. Um, we're ahead of the curve and we want to invite you to, to learn about those solutions as well. And we'll spend some dedicated time learning about our new shooter detection program, um, Active Guardian. So join us for that. And the next one will be on Vigil Cloud. So we'll talk a little bit more to you if you were on the Solutions Showcase, you heard our big announcement and we'd like to continue to educate you on the products that we're developing there. I'm gonna turn it back to Jason, but as always, you know that you have a, a team behind you here to support you. And Jason, can you tell us a little bit about how they can get in contact with them and, and just make sure that, that our customers feel like they have the right resources in place to hit their ground running with these new solutions? Absolutely. Thank you, Susie. And, and, and Aaron, huge thanks to you, bud. That, that was just a great demo. Um, we, we hope this was beneficial for, for all of you and, and, and you just share in this excitement we've got of, the, of this new camera line as well as our updates to, to the Vigil platform uh, to really just support all this new fantastic video technology. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to our, our team of professionals. Uh, we've got our map here with our RSMs and, and inside sales folks listed there with contact information. Um, it, it, again, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Any questions we didn't address today, um, we, we've got a fantastic team here to, to support you in any way, whether it's with 
system builds, uh, pricing, um, um, more more demos and, and more. And you know, as, as Susie shared, we we've got a great training program uh, for your teams to take advantage of as well, and, and just a great technical support team here to help too. So so don't hesitate to reach out, lean on us for support. That's why we're here. Um, and just kind of want to kick things off here. Thanks again for your time and. And, and I hope everybody continues to be safe out there. If you're local here in the States, um, please enjoy a nice, nice long Memorial Day weekend and, and looking forward to, to seeing you next week again. Thanks everybody. Thanks so much. And for just any of you who didn't get any questions answered, we will respond to you directly. I think most of the, the questions were answered in the chat. Scott Green, I'll be calling you directly. Thank you for that. <laughs> and um, I really just appreciate all of you being on the call today. Please watch your inbox for that next newsletter coming out with all the product documentation. We wanna make sure that you have that available. And if for some reason you're not on our email list, shoot me an email at suzy.able at 3xlogic.com and I'll make sure to get you on there. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care.